What's up, everybody? You already know who it is. Target individual, CJVK. Um, yeah, so, oh, uh, there's no, what was it, Tuesday, January 18th, you know, um, my mother came back from the hospital on Sunday, and, um, at some point, when she went to sleep Sunday night, and then woke up Monday morning, and I could tell when, when she got up, when she got up the tub Sunday night, she was, she had fell asleep in the tub, and then as I started, then when she woke up again, and I um, started to, you know, take out the tub, she was half asleep and kept mentioning something about fish scales and something about the tongue on the side of the mouth, and it was almost as if like she was talking to somebody else. And, you know, me already had been going through, you know, electronic harassment for the last 15 months or so. Um, I already know what all of the signs look like, especially when it comes to um, what it looks like when someone is being manipulated, you know, using the post-magnetic frequency. And um, the way she kept saying this thing and being half sweet, I just knew, you know, she was being manipulated. Because, you know, like you see in the previous video, instinct, instinctively, when I put her on the bed, I took my, I took my architecture radio um, app out and I looked around her bedroom and there was a fake unknown carrier cell tower right and it's like basically like you know augmentedly right in her bedroom now i already know that there's a device kind of like a stingray device um that people can use that can pulse um you know radio frequencies that are basically like, that's kind of like that's kind of like you know how to sell how actual cell towers work you know they you know they Pulse out a signal, and then the cell phone, which would ping, it would ping off that signal. But when it comes to the human brain, these cell towers will pulse the frequency signal, and then our brains will receive the signal. Um, then once they, once they basically, you know, make that that connection, or you know, they use the heterodyne technique, and they make that connection with the brain, they can then code in, you know, certain things. To, um, you could hear the laughing in the background. Who, who's up this late on a Tuesday morning? Ain't nobody, ain't nobody usually up at 2.14 laughing this loud at 2 in the morning. So you already know that's gang stalking. You know. Um, so yeah, they basically, ever since this morning, she's been, she's been stuck in this loop. Where she doesn't want to leave. Let me see. She's been in the, she's been in the tub for hours, but she you know she was consciously you know trying to keep refreshing the water, making sure it doesn't get too cold and stuff like that. And she keeps you know going over this one part in the Bible, um, Matthew chapter twelve, verse thirty through thirty two, and. You know, it's basically, it's basically talking about how, um, those, let me see, how does it go? Let's see if I can pull it up. See, that's how, that's how it is? Oh, wow. Okay, so 
So here's where she keeps, you know, getting, I don't know, she just keeps going over this one thing and I already know this is, this is them. They done mess with her mind using these radio frequencies and as much as I try to tell her what's been happening with me while she's in the hospital, she, you know, she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to understand it. So because these cowards, because they're losing their battle with me, they're going to attack everyone else. They're attacking one of my cousins, they're attacking my mother, you know. And as much as I've taught myself and learned about, you know, these frequencies and everything, they lose, they, they already lost their battle with me, so they're going to pick a fight with everybody else because they're cowards. So, um, she keeps going over this part. Matthews chapter 12, verse 30. It says, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Basically saying, if you're not with God, then you're against him. And if you do not come, if you do not, you know, come to him, those who don't come to him, they'll basically, you know, they will roam the earth free to be manipulated by Lucifer, right? Um, then 31, Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. You know, so, you know, just about basically, you know, you can be forgiven for, for just about almost any sin and any blasphemy. But, you know, if you, if you work again if you choose not to obey the holy spirit if you if you basically claim that you know there is no god you know you don't believe in the holy spirit you know kind of basically like what they're doing with this technology they're proved they, they're already proven that they don't believe in god they don't believe in the holy spirit so they're using technology to try to you know uh they use, they're trying to use technology to see if they can, you know, live a better life, you know. But at the same time, they're only condemning themselves. And you know what? I always believe that everything that happens in this world happens for a reason exactly the way that it's happened because it wouldn't happen this way. So, you know, me understanding my targeting situation and then the way they're attacking it and then the, the, the preciseness and the very, it's not even a coincidence that she's stuck on this one part. That she's stuck on this one part. And she's been at this for hours. And she will not, I cannot get her to leave the tub. She's been stuck at this for hours. She keeps thinking that, you know, she needs to figure this thing out. And she can't leave the tub. And then um, 32 says, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgive, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You know, and that's, that's pretty much straight up right there. Like, you know, um, you know, if you basically, if you speak against, you know, if you speak against, you know, Jesus, then, uh, let me see, whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. Okay, so basically, in that part, he's saying, you know, if you, uh, I want to say, this is just my own interpretation, uh, and whosoever speaketh a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven so if you speak if you speak against you know if you speak against jesus then you know it's like you don't believe in jesus then that in itself you can you know you can be forgiven for that because you know you know as humans you you are um you are susceptible to you know basically um being disbelief of you know, Jesus, who is the Son of Man. Um, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. You know, but basically it's like, 
if you don't believe in the resurrection or the spirit, the Holy Spirit that basically gives you life every single day, you know, that energy that, that you produce, you know, that, that energy that gives you, that makes your heart beat, that energy that makes your brain operate, you know, if you speak against that spirit, you will not be forgiven. And I just got chills when I said that. Every time I get chills when I speak, that's how I know I'm right. You know. Then it says, um, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So basically, if you look at everything that's happening in this world, right? Everything from the economy, the virus, you know, the violence, everything that is happening. Right here, this is this is made centuries ago. Remember, the Bible was written centuries ago, but history always repeats itself. And I and I tell people this all the time: history always repeats itself. It says, once again, it says, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So basically, saying that, um, you know, if you don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit. If you don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven in this physical world. And then it says the world to come, also meaning when you leave your body and your spirit comes out of your body and your flesh is and your flesh is no longer you can no longer carry you can no longer your vessel can no longer carry your, your you know your, your vessel can no longer carry your spirit. Your spirit will not even be forgiven. You know, and, um, yeah. I am a master of protecting my peace, so, um, right now, um, I'm holding the commandments. It says, honor thy father and thy mother, so, blesses the man, you know, who, um, what is it, blesses the man who honor thy, thy mother and father, something like that. But also, um, Blesses the man who holds the, who holds the commandments too. But um, yeah. So I don't know, y'all. Um, right now I'm just basically I'm I'm just trying to do what I can. Um, I'm trying not to think of doing what I, what I'm thinking about doing is, is getting like. I don't know, uh, psychologically, because I know once I do that, it's a wrap. Because once, once I have to, you know, once I have to do that part and, you know, get psychologically helpful, I already know that's going to be a wrap. But, um, I don't know, she won't get out the tub. Um... And then on top of that, she's not eating. She's drinking water, though. She is drinking water. But she's not eating. Um, she ate, she ate some... She, she saw me eating some chips when I walked into the bathroom and asked for some chips, so she ate some chips. But she's not really trying to eat anything, but she won't leave the tub. You know, and she's getting tired. You know, and... um. You know, and it's like, I can hear them everywhere. They're just like, well, because, like, I know the people upstairs, they're part of the game stalking, you know. I can hear, you know, it's probably people with their windows open, talking loud and everything. So it's like, I'm already aware of who's involved. I, I'm already aware. Um, But I already, I already, look. They knew that they were losing against me. They already knew they were lo losing against me, so that's why they going out and they went after her. You know, and, um, it's like when you think about what they do, <clears throat> they're basically trying to use fear to see if they can control you. They will use these frequencies to try to induce fear to control people. And if you don't want to be controlled, then you will be um, you know, you will be on the, basically the, uh, um, the receiving end of being tormented and then broadcasted so that, 
fuck actually on the dark web so then everybody can watch you being tortured. You know, but um, I'm glad God gave me the vision and I was born the way just exactly I was supposed to be born because I always knew since my early 20s, I used to, I used to tell everybody, I used to say this to my friends and my family, I have a feeling that my 30s are going to be a trip. I'll be 33 in March. And you know, the funny thing, I always remember this one thing, I always remember this one part, I'll be like, you know, Jesus died at 33. You know, so I was just like, well, I kind of wonder. I kind of wonder. So, um, but death doesn't, death doesn't want to scare me. That's, that's, that's basically liberation. That's basically my ascension right there. So, um, you know, because they can't, because they can't put fear in my heart, they're going to try to see if they can do it another way by attacking the people around me attacking my family and then whoever whoever in the family that's you know already that's not flipped they're gonna attack them you know so um yeah i just i just felt a tuning on my right ear so they, 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 they're trying to hit me with frequencies but they already know they lost they can't win against me because i'm already too strong I'm already too strong. So they can't win against me. They're going to try to attack everyone else around me. You know, and I and I, I remember before my mom even went into the hospital in December, for the last 15 months, you know, I've been trying to tell her. And it's crazy because when my targeting started, when my targeting started, I was living in the Bronx, right? It, it started, I moved to that department. I mean, hell, if they're going to call me a snitch, I'm not going to just go all out, right? So, when, I'm, when I got the apartment, 1490 Boone Avenue, right? When I got the apartment, September 2019, first of all, I tried to, I tried to, um, I tried to actually, um, I tried to actually reject the apartment because I couldn't afford it, really. Um, the rent was too, it was, the rent was, much higher than my my actual income you know um and then they also falsified documents saying i made you know nearly sixty thousand dollars uh, in 2018 when i only really made close to forty thousand um just to see if they could get me in the apartment and funny thing was the guy who was doing my application he basically <laughs> I'm not even gonna get into the fact the fact that he was hitting on me through the whole you know application process, but um yeah he kept just edging me on and edging me on to basically um you know take the apartment it's gonna be a nice apartment no make enough money and you never know you'll get a you'll get a um you'll get a uh what you call it you know you may get a raise blah 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 you know. And I don't know, in my, in my head, I was thinking, you know, this is a brand new apartment, it's a lottery apartment, you know, it's, you know, everything is going to be real nice with it, and it's going to be my first apartment with no roommates, so I was like, okay, you know, so I was like, you know what, and, and you know what, crazy thing is, I remember, <laughs> I remember when I, uh, I had asked my, my manager at the time when I was working at this restaurant, I asked my manager, I was like, can I ask you a personal question, or it was more about me. I was like, with the income that I'm making, you know, you know, you know what I'm making. And I was like, with the income I'm making, do you think I can afford to pay a, a twelve, uh, a twelve fifty rent, you know, with this? And she was like, oh. she said, yeah, you know, um, you know, you can, you can get a raise at some point, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, you know, I was like, I got a confirmation. I was like, all right, you know what, I'm gonna do it. You know, um, so I moved in September 2019. You know, um, everything was going smooth till about that, that March 2020, um, that March 2020 was, oof, I don't know what the hell, but that March 2020 between, you know, if you go back to my earlier videos, I told you the story about, you know, the whole, you know, I, that was probably street that I'm not even sure, but, you know, that whole domestic violence situation with, you know, um, the neighbor that lived down the hall, um, you know, uh, it was a, it, it was an older woman, um, 
But, oh, uh, which one I call it? What happened? You know, long story short, you know, this, this young girl, probably in her early 20s, come running out into the hallway saying, you know, somebody called the police, he hit me. Me and my friend, you know, who was visiting from Texas, we was just in, we was in my apartment. You know, and then she was like, Chris, you should go and check to see what's going on out there. You know, I originally was, was going to mind my business unless I heard, you know, actually banging, like banging on the walls or something. But, you know, so I went out there to check on the situation. It was three guys, you know, two, all in their 20s, you know, it was two, two dark-skinned dudes, but they were standing against the door to the side. And then there was this light-skinned dude, you know, holding this girl's phone away from her. And, um, what you gonna call it? And she's like, give me my phone. Give me my phone. And, um, the, the woman that lived there was the light-skinned dude's mother, right? And she's just kind of, like, standing to the side. And, you know, the dude is, like, like trying to hold her phone away from her and stuff like that. And then he kind of looks over at me like this. And then rolls his eyes. And then he gives, and then he gives her her phone. So then my friend goes and checks on the girl and um what you call it? And she's like, Chris, let me get your phone so I can call the police. So I was like, uh, in my head, I didn't see no reason to call the police because I was like, I don't see nothing, no problem here. I mean, if she got her phone back, she can go. You know, that and that was what I was thinking in my head, but I don't know, I was like, alright, I ain't I don't see no no problem with it. So I gave her my phone so she could call the police with it. You know. Um the woman that, you know, the mother, you know, the mother probably in her 60s or so, you know, and she she was always nice. She was always real cool. You know, she, we would always say hello, good morning, stuff like that. You know, I know she used to have home attendants, you know, come and check on her and stuff like that. You know, we never had no problems, you know. Um, so, you know, she would, you know, she walks over to me and she, she apologizes to me. So I was like, you know, don't worry about it. You know, I'm like, it's New York. You know, shit happens, right? You know, so, um, you know, me and my friend, we go back into the hallway. The girl goes that way and everybody else go that way. And I come back, I come back into my apartment, you know, me and my homegirl, we like, yo, that was crazy. And then next thing you know, about like 10 minutes later, we hear footsteps and keys banging and stuff like that. And it was like three cops that walked past the door. And then a girl was like right behind them. Or well, the girl goes first, and there's like three cops that go behind her. And um, I don't know. We don't know what happened after that. I don't remember hearing anybody getting taken out, blah, 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 whatever. But um, I know throughout, you know, between March and like... Between March and like uh, September or October, you know, I was doing, you know, we were, I was still quarantined. I didn't find a job yet, you know, but, you know, there were... Through that time, man, the mental battle of, of not working on me, I've never not had a job before, like, like at least not longer than six months. If I wasn't in school, I was working, you know, so I've never not had a job longer than six months. So, like, you know, I'm not going to lie, like, I definitely, I definitely was drinking, you know, smoking weed, but, you know, nothing nothing crazy though nothing crazy though I, and then what i probably i was like watching movies and netflix and whatever but i wasn't doing nothing with nobody you know then you know i'm not going to go through the whole story again but remember you know it, it was like late september early october um i had this dream i had a dream that you know there was like a dark spirit or whatever it was like a dark or figure that was standing over my couch when I, and I was sleeping my dream but I had like sleep paralysis right so I was like I couldn't speak and I couldn't move my body and go like, they just they just tried to beam another figure they're trying to heterodyne me again that's basically what it is and then um next thing you know um um like I remember seeing the figure pointing at me like it was it looked just like the dude from March, but the face was blurred out. Had his hair sticking out like this, had on the white, the same white beater, 
some um some short look just like the dude from Mud, but his face was blurred out. I didn't I didn't get it right away though. But you know, but it had this this black fuzzy like aura around his figure. And then I remember it didn't say anything. It just stood there just looking at me. And then I couldn't move and I couldn't say anything. Cause you know when you when you think about it, if you wake up, right? If you wake up and you open your eyes and you see a figure, the first thing you want to do is jump up like the fuck. You know, but I didn't move. I couldn't move and I couldn't speak in my dream. And then once the figure started to raise his hand and like point at me, I was like, yo, I it's about to do something. I gotta I gotta get up. But the only and then look, I'm getting chills right now. The one thing I could only think of was I was like, I gotta get out of this somehow. And I was like, what can I do to get out of this? I just said the word Jesus. I kid you not, like with the snap of the fingers, I woke up, I woke up, and I sat up. I sat up, and I just sat on my, my, my couch just like this, like, I sat on my couch just like this. And I was just like, yo, something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. And I think that was my first introduction to dream manipulation. I think that was his way of saying that he is going to target me you know and this is way before like i started to do the research on you know frequencies and, and electromagnetic field and the effects on the on the brain psychological and biological you know so um you know and i love telling the story because they're they're all watching me so I love telling this story because this is the truth. That's the thing. This is the truth. And in the and the, and the crazy thing is, their whole, their whole, like their reason for targeting me, right? They're like, oh, he talks about people. And I'm like, that's some petty ass shit. Like you really gonna use? Is that's like basically? That's like basically if. <laughs> that's like basically like every time. You know what? That's like some totalitarian type shit. You know, just like how, like, like you know, when you think of how a dictatorship, country, like a country that's ran by dictators, like when you say something, like if you say something about the president, and they just they they just say, oh, he said something, kill him. It's basically just like that, just like that. And, then, and think about it. When you think about how in the in the you know back in the Egyptians. The Egyptian times and the pharaohs and stuff. Because remember, none of this technology is really that new. It's just in a more advanced version of it. You know, because um, remember, sound frequencies have been around for centuries. The use of sound for healing or for, you know, um, hypnotism and stuff like that, that's been around for centuries. So now, with, you know, the, the advancement of radio frequencies, microwaves, and things of that sort, it just becomes easier for anyone to be able to do it as long as you're willing to, uh, to learn you know uh, it's all about power and control um so yeah long story short um when and they still trying to see if they can head her down I, I, you can hear she's still in the she's still in the bathroom i'm not making none of this up you know so I just have to keep documenting this because, you know, um, I already know, um, I've already read in the Bible that, you know, um, at some point, you know, Jesus, Jesus was definitely a targeted individual. Jesus was definitely a targeted individual. And, um, I'm kind of waiting on the day that they probably find some way to set me up and they're going to, you know, so far I've never had an interaction with cops yet. Never had an interaction with cops yet. And I just remember that part in the Bible how, you know, um, how the, the people who congregated against, you know, Jesus, you know, they all plotted on him. They all plotted on him just like they're doing to me right now. They all plotted on him before they finally sent, you know, the, you know, um, before they finally sent um, the officers um, to go and lay hands on Jesus. I've never had an interaction with cops yet since my targeting started. It's, it's always been street level, you know, street theater and the electronic harassment. Now, I know who's all involved. I already know. But I can't act against them because then that would, that would be me incriminating myself, right? 
I already know in me as an empath, every single person that I walk past in the street, I can feel the energy vibrating off that person. You know, I'm a Pisces, so it's like, it's it's nothing for me to be able to tell who a person is without them even saying a word. Like, I can, like, not, not it's not about what, the way you look. I could literally look in your direction and feel your energy coming off of you within, like, like eight feet from you. You don't even have to say a word to me, and I can already tell if you're a decent person or not. I could tell if you're a good person and you probably just get manipulated. I could tell if you, if, I could tell if you a savage. I could really tell if you a savage. I could tell if you're probably somebody who, you know, who could be a decent person, but you, you know, you just don't trust nobody because you've been, you've been, you know, you've been used and you kind of just have this like, you know, you just, you just suspect of everybody, you know. And this is why I believe throughout my entire life, I've always been a cool ass person. Why? Because I don't judge. I don't, I don't judge anybody you see i pause right there right because i had to think about it myself i don't judge anybody i acknowledge the actions of people but i don't judge you i still treat you with respect and i still treat you the same as i would do anybody else if you don't disrespect me i don't disrespect you that's why i don't understand of all the years i spent living in new york city and living in this area you know and i'm like fuck it if they're gonna call me a, a snitch for you know exposing gang stalking of i lived in canarsie for about 16 17 years of my life and i've never had problems with anybody all of a sudden when i moved to the bronx in september 2019 that's when shit started to change i have no idea what the hell happened i have no idea how big of an influence you know they've been using this radio frequency stuff on people but and so, and the funny thing is, I think they're speaking through a mic, and they got like a whole like fucking. <laughs> I think they got like a whole speaker or something set down on the floor or whatever. You know, like I don't know, like somebody bought a karaoke machine or whatever. But anyway, um, you know, so, um, because I mean, I've always known about secret societies, but I figured, well, secret society, I was like, uh. I'm too, I'm too, I'm too, like, low level, like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have no, no power, or, or at least I didn't think I had power, but I didn't think I was on the radar to really be, you know, yeah, and she, and she's like falling asleep every now and then, I'm trying to tell her maybe you need to get some rest, but she's like, no, I gotta finish this. But I'm like, there's nothing more to finish, and you already, you already understand it, but I try to, I, I, well, I try to explain to her what's happening, you know, as far as technology and whatnot, but, um, yeah, she, she's not hearing me, so, but, um, you know, but yeah, so now, um, uh, I don't know, I'm just letting the chips fall where they may. And, uh, they're basically, they're basically sucking me, they're trying to suck me with my energy. And, uh, and using technology. Because, remember, when, once they heterodyne you, and then they basically use the, um, the, uh, photon energy beam to basically, um, um, stimulate. It's like a, it's like a, it's kind of, it's similar to like transcranial magnetic stimulation, you know, they, you know, um, they're using like a, cause like right now, I used, I wear these hats because it, it, it helped, it, I actually learned over time, it helped me pinpoint exactly where they're stimulating, so, through the top of the head, they go straight to the pineal gland, right, then, over on this side here, you have the somatosensory cortex, right, that's where, you know, they can basically stimulate different parts of, you know, the body, including, like, the arms, eyes, you know, uh, you know, legs, feet, things of that sort. Then back here, you know, where the cerebellum is, you got the visual cortex. That's where they basically can see through your eyes. Um, you got the auditory cortex here, and, you know, here. But you got the auditory cortex that's, like, you know, kind of, like, right up here, 
somewhere like it's, it's usually it's usually like right right above the ear you know inside you know, of course inside the skull but it's right above the ear that's where they stimulate and you can actually hear the that's where the v2k um frequencies come from and then you have um how they affect your memory a memory pro memory processing is along the side side parts of the brain like here that's why when you you know when you start to get headaches and stuff like that and you feel that pressure and you see people do like this you know um so um yeah so they basically are going since they can't win against me and and um you know with game stuff and they can't just outrightly kill you so they you know either either they can't outrightly kill you or they actually benefit more by keeping you alive because uh, i don't know maybe they get paid for each viewer that watched their link or whatever um you know i haven't i've figured out just about almost everything out but where my link is at <laughs> or what app they're using <laughs> That's the only, that's the one part I haven't gotten to. I figured just about everything else out. I figured just about everything else out. But that, that link or, or the app that they use to allow people to watch everything happen, right? You know, I figured everything else out. So now they figured, you know, they were going to advance it even more. And you know what? This is sick man this is really sick because um like i've never been to snitch a day in my life i mean shit i hell i ain't gonna lie i should i i yeah i ain't i ain't, you know I've, I've done some things but nothing nothing felonious you know but i ain't never snitch on nobody you know so that's why i'm just like i don't know how all of a sudden you know, I get to this point, but then, you know, just learning about spirituality and then, and then you hear about, you read about the stories in the Bible and stuff and things about how prophets always are being persecuted, like prophets of God, they always get persecuted, wrongfully persecuted, um, because they're not, they're not of the world, that's why, and, you know, um, and I hear him now, he's like, exactly, he's snitching on everybody. And it's like, because, and he's like, he's real successful about it. And it's funny, because look, I mean, you can see in the other, within the last 10 videos, um, I, rec I literally got the recording of his voice, and of his voice, and his girl's voice, um, through the frequency and, and you, you can see I, I play the original sound clip and then i play the um the clip where i've i, I increased the volume and you know did noise reduction and, and and you know just tweaked it a little bit and you actually hear them say it's not a movie christopher and then it's like um you hear him say like it's like he says two things but the one thing i remember is like it's not a movie christopher and then you hear uh old girl tell us in, uh, in the next clip you hear old girl say he happy no oh no she says he confident <laughs> cause it's like their whole thing is if they figure they can scare you just enough that you'll be able to give up cause it's, it's all about demoralization and you know all this is tactics that were used back it goes all the way back to World War II Nazis um um, hell, cold, the Cold War, um, cause hell, even in 1990, I think it was like 1996, Bill Clinton even apologized on, in a, in a press conference about how the United States experimented with radiation on American citizens, so, you can already, you can already assume if, if, if that's already, if that's real, then you, you can already assume that, like, in the future, the government's probably subcontracting out to, you know, probably these secret societies. The government is subcontracting out um, technology so then, you know, somebody else can be blamed and not the U.S. government. You know, so, um, you know, but anyway, uh, 
we've been on here long enough, 40 minutes, so this is, this is basically just me, um, updating everybody who knows what I've been going through for the last 15 months, this is what, you know, um, this is what's happening, right, and, um, you know what, there is no fear in me, why, because, you know, like I said, Jesus was wrongfully persecuted in just the same way that the Jesuits and Judas all turned against Jesus and they watched him they watched him get basically, you know, mutilated and, and destroyed by all the people that he did he basically did nothing wrong to. But they all turned against him. This is, this is, this is me bearing my cross at this point, you know, and it's, and it's, I find it hilarious though, because it just, it proved to me that, it, that, um, I mean, when you think about it, if this was a, a battle for me to actually fight, right, if this was a, if this was like an actual, you know, if this was supposed to be an actual fight for me to, for me to have, you know, I would have, you know, I'm pretty sure God would have made sure that, you know, um, if me and that person would have crossed, I probably would have, I probably would have bust his ass. I ain't even gonna lie. I probably would have bust his ass. Cause knowing what he looked like, I mean, I mean, I probably could definitely take it. I remember what he looked like, him and the other two dudes. So, um, but, um, uh, yeah. At the end of the day, um, knowing how it's moving in secrecy like this, and they and they have and they have to basically get an army to go against one person. That's what that's what makes me. That's what makes, that's what really gives me that 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 joy right there. They basically had to get an army of people just to try to get one person. Because it's a secret society, right? Yeah, he's like exactly. Christopher, we a secret society. Because I know if this was if this was the actual street shit, I would have been done. I would have been killed. Because I don't hide. I'm not hiding from nothing. I don't have nothing to hide. They know I. They know when I get up for work in the morning. I'm walking. I get up for work at two thirty in the morning, and I have to be to work by four thirty. And most of the time, I'm walk, I always end up walking to the train station. It's always dark, you know. How people getting people getting shot in broad daylight anyway. So it's like I'm not hot and over. So if this was the actual street, if this was actual street shit, I would have been killed a long time ago. You know? And my mother already warned me, she was like, you know, she was like, Don't even worry, don't even worry about it. I ain't stoned by myself. They ain't trying to do nothing but scare you half to death. <laughs> you know, so so now now, I mean, I tried to explain the technological part of, of it to her, but, you know, um, she old school. She's 73 years old, so she want to, you know, she, her instinct was to stick to the Bible. So, um, I'm going I'm to honor that with, for her. I'm going to just let her, let her do that, you know, and I just, I just watch over her, um, you know, and, you know, for as long as I can remember, you know, Cause my mother, she had me at 40. So, so as long as I could remember, she's been in and out of hospitals, you know, for health reasons and stuff. So, and, you know, it's not foreign to me. It's not foreign to me to see her in, you know, in situations where it seems like her health is deteriorating or anything like that. So I'm already, I'm already built for this at this point. I'm built for all this. So, like, I mean, because I'm like, I grew up in a hood. I grew up in a hood. So, it's like, I'm used to physical confrontation. I'm used to, um, you know, I'm used to, I'm used to face-to-face -face altercation. I'm used to that. You know, I'm used to seeing her, you know, um, I'm used to seeing her in situations where it seemed like, you know, she, she would be like this close to, you know, death or whatever. I'm used to that. You know, so that's why I'm saying, 
throughout my entire life, my entire life has it has been building me up to this exact moment in life. That's why I said they already lost. They have no idea who I am. They already lost. So now they figure, oh, we're gonna broadcast it so that everybody know your secrets. And the funny thing is, you can only have secrets if you have not accepted the person who you were in the past and everything that you've done. Those if you have secrets, that means you have not fully accepted the person that you are and who you and what you have done in the past. If someone can hold something over your head, you have not fully accepted who you are and what you have done in the past. If someone can hold something over your head, you just gave someone power over you. Look, now, now that I'm saying some real, something real, they're trying to hit me with, you know, directed energy. It felt like a, like a laser beam just hit me right, like a, a hot laser just hit me right at the top of my head. So, um, sound like she's draining the water out again. But, um, yeah, this has been the cycle. She just stays in there, just keeps the water going, you know. But, um, yeah, so... But yeah, like I said, I'm like, cause I was like, when I when I found out about game stuff, and you know, I, you know, uh, Lord, I don't know what you did with with my May spirit, but um, I thank God, I thank God for for, for coming across my May. You know, my May in 2014, um, he he had a video where he posted like he had a video where he listed like the nine um tactics of game stalking and you know i have it in my phone and i'm just like yo if it wasn't for him i would have been lost i would have been lost i don't know what i would have done but i mean i would have just resided i would have just well i feel like god probably would have god jesus and my guardian angel they would have guided me through this whole thing anyway you know but um Yeah, I feel like they, they're trying to do something extra now. But, um, yeah, so there are several points of the, of the brain that they try to stimulate the most. Um, try to induce pain, try to induce a psychosis, you know, try to induce all kinds of things. But, um, I have learned things, how I've learned many ways of how to actually minimize the effects of their radio frequency and even possibly um block um and um something else i learned is um i keep trying to i keep my i keep trying to tell people you gotta learn about healing frequencies learn learn this stuff learn about healing frequencies because let me see They're doing something. Cause right now I feel I feel pressure building up in the back of my head, and then there's like pressure moving like along my eye. So I don't know what they're about to do now, but um, I'm gonna just rest in God on it. So, but um, yeah. So um, basically, like I said. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do when I'm doing it at this very moment. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do at this moment and how they're doing it. Why? Because history always repeats itself. History always repeats itself. And I already know in my position I'm gonna I'm gonna win no matter what. Like my vessel, they could take this body if they want. They could take this body, but they can't. My soul is already caught and clean. My soul is already spoken for. You know, they could take my life, but they can't take my spirit. You know, they can try to take my mother's life, but they can't take her spirit. Because instinctively, she needed to go straight to the Bible. So they could they could do all that they want, but they can't take our spirit back. You know, so. But yeah, T.I., um... You see my strength. 
you see how calm I am. You, you know, you've never seen me do like a video where I'm like, fuck them bitch ass. I was like, no, I can't even, I can't even allow it. I can't even, they're not even worth, they're not even worth me stepping down that low. I can't even, I, I, I can't even give them that, that, that emotion, anger, frustration, anything like that. I can't even give them that. I can't even give them that. <laughs> I would I would rather be more frustrated with myself than to ever give them the um uh, the uh the the enjoyment of me being frustrated with them. Nah. I smile at them. I give them a thumbs up. Like my man Deep Fake Video Rob. You know. But anyway, um yeah, I'm gonna I'm just keep my eye on her, see what happens. Um, yeah, I, I haven't been back to work since December 18th, and um, I, I, I know I need to go back to work, but uh, I need to figure out what I need to do next. Um, my sister can't really do much because, you know, she got her own health situation. You know, and um, really, is 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 really just me. So, um, yeah. All right, yeah. Um, I'll keep y'all posted. You know, and remember, if you don't, if you, if I don't post within about a week, if I if, if I don't post within seven days, just know that they either have found a way to get me arrested somehow, they basically, or they could be probably kidnapped me, or they probably killed me somehow, so, um, but yeah, if you don't hear from me, you know, if I, if I ever go seven days without posting a video, you know something had happened to me, and just Go ahead and send some prayers out to me. I mean, still do that now, but anyway, yeah. Um, as always, take life one breath, one thought, one step, one day at a time, man. All right, peace.